Alrighty, boyos, welcome back once again to another video. How are you guys doing? Guys, today we're going to be talking about the new Steam Piston, which is the Steampunk Assault Rifle in Fortnite Save the World. You can obtain this assault rifle by going into the Pirate Llamas. All you need is 500 spring tickets. You'll be able to buy one of these and you'll have a chance at getting this new assault rifle. And with every single update, usually the assault rifle is always the most hyped up weapon in the update. So how does the Steam Piston kind of stand up to the rest of the new steampunk weapons and even some of the quest weapons let's head on over to the armory and i will show you guys my own personal steam piston how i rolled it why i rolled it that way go over my hero loadout and then go over some gameplay and some final thoughts on the weapon so first up this is the steam piston itself honestly whenever this update first rolled around it was probably this one took me by surprise i think the most i absolutely love the design of this weapon it kind of makes me think of a uh, scavenger weapon but it looks more sleek and you know a lot more clean in my opinion it looks really 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 good a very aesthetically pleasing assault rifle it is of course a semi-auto assault rifle if we take a look at the stats with the current perks that i have and with the hero load that i have um we have just about 16k damage just about 28k headshot damage 43 percent crit chance 420 blaze it percent crit hit damage a 2.7 fire rate 35 in the magazine 4096 range uh, 2.6 reload speed and 669 impact now the rolls that I went on this weapon is crit damage magazine size any element that you really want I went with energy uh, critical rating critical damage and the final perk is getting five headshots in a row increases ranged weapon damage by 30 percent for 10 seconds now I do want to go ahead and explain why that is my final roll if we go on over to my backpack this is one there's one that death uh death grip crafted for me i actually think i uh dismantled it but th this will do this uh same way i can still showcase this one uh the final perk that you know most people have been going with on their new weapons is on hit bullet splinters and a shrapnel dealing 40 percent damage in a cone behind the target and it has a 1.5 second cooldown now i did some testing off camera uh i was using death grips you know death grip gave me a steam piston with this perk and he had it maxed out and whatever it's just very underwhelming in my opinion. Uh, the shrapnel doesn't really do damage, it doesn't really do that much damage, and it seems that it's very inconsistent with its damage numbers, not to mention that the cooldown period is just way too long to really get any use out of this. So with the one that I went specifically, normally whenever you go with a semi-auto assault rifle, you are going to be going for headshots. You know, if you're using one, even I myself who doesn't normally go for headshots, when I'm using a semi-auto assault rifle, I am going for headshots. So I made sure that my last perk was going to at least boost my damage in some way, shape, or form uh, because I feel like the shrapnel perk personally doesn't really work too well and may also possibly be bugged. So I decided to opt against uh, perking one up that had that final perk on it. Maybe it might get changed in the future. Um, the flavor text for this weapon is an assault weapon, semi-automatic, a steampunk, a versatile rifle that deals steady damage. Now let's go ahead and go on over to the hero loadout that I'm using with this weapon and uh, take a look at that. So in my commander perk, we have or my uh, commander slot, we have a tactical assault sledgehammer. You guys probably know exactly what this guy is. Your assault crit damage plus, which increases your assault critical damage by 225%. My team perk for this was keep out. Normally, whenever I'm no or using a soldier build, I always try to go with keep out because you're going to have five soldiers anyways, and it's going to make at least one of your abilities really good if the rest of your uh, support team is going to be geared towards your weapon, which in this case it is. We are not focused on abilities whatsoever whatsoever uh, in my opinion this new steampunk assault rifle is very lacking in the damage department so i tried my best to boost it as much as possible even though some are a little bit of a wasted opportunity and you guys will see what i'm talking about in a moment so in our support team we have the assault damage which comes from rescue trooper havoc this also comes from rescue trooper ramirez which can be found in the collection book this guy is going to be giving 17 percent more assault damage we go on over to skull ranger ramirez this also comes from skull trooper jonesy uh, after reloading it increases your weapon damage by 15 percent for five seconds uh, i thought about using this character for my commander perk uh, you know if you guys look at our commander perk it also increases your fire rate by 35 percent for five seconds but we did some testing and 
and the percentage that it does give your weapon is so minuscule that you'll pretty much be finishing about three to two bullets before somebody without this buff so it's really not that good i was hoping that skull ranger ramirez might be able to boost the fire rate significantly but unfortunately that is not the case which is why i went with sledgehammer uh, we also have startup from bulletstorm jonesy again trying to squeeze as much damage as possible every shot increases your ranged weapon damage by one percent up to a maximum of 25 stacks this is where it's a little bit wasted right down here mad tidings he basically does the same except for he increases um, your stability or makes your stability worse and he also gives you um you know one free stack of damage for every single shot up to 50 stacks which we can't take advantage of but again we're trying to get the most damage possible and then we also have first shot rio this is a weapon that is a semi-automatic and normally semi-automatics have more damage per bullet so for the first two bullets of the magazine we'll have a hundred percent crit chance because this weapon actually does have some really decent crit damage so even though first shot rio is only useful directly after a reload it does pair pretty well with locked and reloaded and it kind of gives you a little bit of a damage boost uh, going up into startup and mad tidings now i want to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of gameplay of me doing a smasher test i did two smasher tests um, and some other ones off camera i did an elemental one and a physical one here is a, a little bit of gameplay of the physical smasher test and as you guys will see i am able to 10 shot this smasher pretty decent um, you guys got to keep in mind um, of course that i am getting off two guaranteed crits also locked and reloaded is in effect by the time that i'm using this uh, i made sure to shoot and reload right before i was shooting at the smasher to get the maximum possible amount of damage so you're not always going to be 10 shotting smashers but this is with the most amount of potential without wasting the rest of my bullets for the startup and mad tidings this next clip i'm going to show you guys is the elemental smasher and you guys will see that it'll take me about 13 shots to kill this smasher of course doing the exact same thing making sure that i shoot and then reload for locked and reloaded and that i'm also able to get the two guaranteed crits and out of all the testing that i did it's kind of similar all around you'll get around you know 13 shots to 15 shots on elemental smashers you get about 10 shots to 12 shots on physical smashers so somewhere in that realm that is the damage that you'll be doing and of course that is without the startup and the mad tidings fully stacked up but yes those are two quick smasher tests that's kind of a general idea of how much damage you're going to be doing now i kind of want to go ahead and seg on over to the gameplay portion of this video and give you guys my overall thoughts on this weapon because in my opinion it's a little bit underwhelming and I'm sure you guys could tell that I felt that way as my support team is just trying so hard to squeeze out as much damage as possible so let's go ahead and move on over to the gameplay portion of the video and let's talk about my thoughts on the weapon Alrighty, righty so here we are at the gameplay portion of the video and in this portion i'm just going to be talking about my general thoughts on the steam piston ar the gameplay in the background unfortunately is not a four times 100 however we did go into a level 100 mission and boost the difficulty just enough so that the enemies are power level 118 the four times mission at the time just had some garbage multipliers or garbage modifiers and i really didn't want to bother with it uh so yeah that is the gameplay in the background of course i'm playing with four players so i am going to be getting a damage buff but but unfortunately with this weapon I just don't feel as though I'm doing enough damage and that is my main gripe with this weapon I'm actually a very big fan of semi-automatic weapons in this game especially the dragon's roar the dragon's roar feels amazing sounds amazing looks amazing it pierces targets it does affliction it's a really good semi-auto rifle and it's one of my top five personal favorite assault rifles in the game so whenever I found out that this new steampunk set was gonna have a semi-auto uh, assault rifle I was a little bit excited but to my dismay, I found out that this weapon is really just underwhelming. It's very underwhelming in its reload speed, it's very underwhelming in its fire rate, it's very underwhelming in its damage in general, and even in the gameplay in the background, whenever I'm in a game with four people that are all boosting my damage and trying to get the most damage out of my weapon possible with my loadout, not even putting anything uh, towards you know abilities or anything like that I'm still finding myself shooting enemies for longer than I feel like I should with the dragon's roar you have an amazing reload speed you have an amazing uh, fire rate and you have amazing overall DPS because of that with this weapon you're finding yourself shooting way too slow you were shooting at the same target for far too long regardless of how many bullets it takes you to kill them compared to other weapons the overall time to kill is really what matters and that's why you know I was talking about earlier 
in the video, I was really trying to use Skull uh, Ranger Ramirez to boost that fire rate. I just found that the fire rate was a little too underwhelming. And I feel like putting a fire rate, um, you know, perk on this weapon would make it feel better, but in terms of the damage, it really would not help it out in the damage department. Now, I'm sure you could probably go with a headshot or a normal damage build with some fire rate on your weapon, but I still feel as though it's not going to be that much better, even at all better than the normal crit build that we're going with right now, because just about 50% of your shots are going to be doing 420% blaze it extra damage, you know, that critical damage. And it's actually very noticeable whenever you do crit, but I feel as though the base damage of this weapon combined with the lower fire rate combined with the long reload is really, really killing it in the long run. Uh, I kind of hope that there is a buff sometime in the future, uh, especially to the shrapnel perk. I was really hoping that the shrapnel perk was what was going to be the saving grace of this weapon. You know, get a bunch of husks in a trap tunnel and just deal tons of damage to them with the shrapnel perk. But then I found out that the shrapnel perk's damage is very inconsistent. Uh, whenever it's going to hit husks is very inconsistent. And the fact that it's on cooldown for about a second and a half is not doing it any justice. I just feel like this weapon in general having a low damage, having low fire rate, having low reload really kills it in the long run. And even though I love semi-auto assault rifles, I'm probably never going to use this weapon again as soon as this video gets uploaded. You'll probably never see me using it, maybe in lower level zones, but that's about it. Overall, I'm very disappointed with this weapon, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, sometimes there does need to be bad weapons. And in this case, because the assault rifle is weaker than the other weapons, it opens up a whole new alleyway for other weapons. The scythe is an absolute monster, the hammer is a beast, Jack's Revenge is amazing, and even the Corsair will shred enemies like no tomorrow. Because the assault rifle is not that good, it's very positive in a sense that it kind of puts the spotlight on other weapons for once, and people are experimenting with other weapons. See, in the case with Frost Knight, yeah, you know, the Stalwart Squire was really cool, and the, the Basilisk was really good, and all that kind of stuff, but the main talk was all about the Hemlock. Everybody was talking about the Hemlock, everybody wanted to upgrade the Hemlock, and it's just an assault rifle at the end of the day, a little bit of a boring weapon. You know, assault rifles are just assault rifles. They're a little bit boring because they're over used. In this update, you got so many people experimenting with so many different things, with all these pistols and these melee weapons and all these different play styles. Just because the assault rifle is bad doesn't necessarily mean that everything is bad in general. You know, it's okay to not get a very good assault rifle once in a while, and even though this assault rifle is very disappointing, it's still borderline mediocre, but I'm probably never going to use it again, but I do want to hear your opinions in the comments down below. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly do appreciate it. If you did make it to this portion of the video, thank you so much for watching this far, and I will be streaming on Twitch from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. 5 p.m. Eastern Time. That's what I meant. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.